Hi everyone. So a couple of months ago, I approved a message in a Facebook group called Math and Physics, where I'm a moderator and group expert, although I'd like to add that I'm an expert at physics education, not physics, but uh, whatever, that, that tag is not available. Uh, so um, anyway, um, this guy uh, has an idea that if Drew would absolutely revolutionize all of mechanics and as you might expect, um, yeah, it fails miserably. Uh, I'm, I was going to respond to it, that's why I approved it, because it, we don't tolerate pseudoscience in this group, but I don't see this as being pseudoscience. I see this more as being uh, a person who doesn't know what he's doing, uh, trying his best, you know, do, making an honest attempt and failing miserably because he's stuck on the west peak of Mount Dunning-Kruger, not for reasons of stupidity, but for reasons of honest ignorance. So let's have a look at what he says. Hi, I discovered closed fluid dynamic principle at home all alone with unofficial education as I could not afford it. It's a new principle in physics answering a connection between quantum mechanics and general relativity, reasons for occurrence of time dilation, gravity, reasons behind inertia, etc. Just help me what I must do next. I can't do it all alone anymore. Please check out the link and I do have a research paper on it, which I, whenever tried for publication, got rejected. An Australian physicist mentioned my research in his book, A Saucer Full of Science, available on Amazon. The problem when you have what you call an unofficial education, uh, I assume you mean not a formal education, um, is that you may have learned about this fact, and this fact, and this fact, and you've developed a model that you think fits all those three, but what about all of these facts, and all of all the ones over here? You know, if you don't know the big picture, if you don't know all the facts, you are going to fail. This is why you should be an expert before you try to add something to a field. As for this uh, Australian physicist you mentioned, uh, oh, your work has been mentioned in a book. Yeah, it's a popular book. So um, I don't care. It would be slightly more impressive if it were mentioned in a scientific peer-reviewed paper published in a respected scientific journal. But anyone can write whatever they want in... Um, in a popular book and get it published. So, yeah, I don't care. I'm just going to evaluate your idea on its own merits. Now let's have a look. I will be answering the questions, what is force and why? what force does to make object move? And why? Why force makes object move? Why G? I mean, why is there gravity, by the way, in the first place? And why gravity? decreases when going up from the crust of the earth and increases when going to the crust. It will also be answering you, it will also be a bridge between the quantum mechanics and general theory of relativity. I mean to say that this research, the closed view dynamic system will be uh, showing you that the gravity on both micro and macro objects in the universe. It will be also answering you what is inertia and why does it take place, by the way? Okay, unfortunately, your accent makes it a little hard for me to understand you. I'm sorry about that. But from what I could understand, you claim to be able to answer the following questions. What is a force and what does a force do to make objects move? Why is there gravity and why does it decrease with distance? What is inertia and why does it exist? How can we make general relativity and quantum mechanics compatible? We already know the answers to the first three of these. Force is a vector quantity describing an interaction that causes a body's velocity vector to change. Newton's second law tells us how to calculate it, F equals ma. It makes objects move because that's what the definition implies. In other words, it's not so much that there is a mechanism by which force causes a change of velocity. In Newtonian mechanics, whatever mechanism changes an object's state of motion, at least in an inertial reference frame, qualifies as a force. Why is there gravity and why does it decrease with distance? Well, I don't think it's possible to answer why gravity exists, but I can tell you that it is the curvature of space-time caused by energy density, which in everyday terms is roughly synonymous with mass. 
As space-time curves due to the presence of a massive body, the trajectories of other objects bend, resulting in a pseudo-force called weight, which in Newtonian mechanics is regarded as a real force. And this force causes the passing object to be attracted by the massive body. The same obviously applies in reverse, so both objects attract each other. As long as the curvature is quite small, say no greater than that caused by a typical planet-sized body, the pseudo-force is well described by Newton's law of universal gravitation, F equals g m1 m2 over r squared. Gravity decreases with distance, specifically distance squared, because there is no favored direction, resulting in the effect of a source of gravity spreading out with spherical symmetry. It's analogous to how light spreads out evenly in all directions from a light bulb or a candle. The intensity decreases with the square of the distance to the light source. What is inertia and why does it exist? Well, inertia is resistance to acceleration and is expressed in terms of mass, which is a property particles acquire through interaction with the Higgs field, much as how particles gain charge by interacting with the electromagnetic field. The greater the mass of an object, the greater the force required to make it reach a desired acceleration. Again, F equals ma. As for your final question, uh, how do we unify general relativity and quantum mechanics? Well. I don't know, I just work here. <laughs> no one knows. It's one of the unsolved problems in physics, and I'm not going to solve it. And neither are you, because you probably don't know anything about those two fields. They are words you've heard, and you may have heard some things about the fields, but can you solve the Schrodinger equation for anything? Do you even know what it is? Are you familiar with Einstein's field equations? Can you work with them? I don't think you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth right now. And that's because these fields are so advanced that you need to stand on an awful lot of basic knowledge before you even begin to take courses in these fields. An introductory course in quantum mechanics or general relativity is not an introductory course in physics. You need to stand on years of prerequisite courses in order to even qualify to start studying those topics. Consider this room full or filled with water. I, I can only move if I make the water out of my way and it takes my position or its own my position from the back. Space is not a vacuum, it's fluid. Okay, this is demonstrably false. Space is the closest thing to a perfect vacuum there is. Uh, we've checked, not only have plenty of people been up there, uh, we have thousands of man-made satellites in orbit and uh, their orbits would look completely different. In fact, they would slow down and crash back down to Earth if space were not a vacuum. Celestial bodies also move as if they're moving through a vacuum. Uh, you are simply wrong. I have to, you know, take out the space out of my way, the liquid space, the fluid space. What does it do? It takes my position from the back and make me move. Yes, any body surrounded by a medium is subjected to pressure from the medium from all sides, including from behind. But assuming even pressure, the pressure from one side is cancelled out by the pressure from the opposite side. The remaining force from the medium acting on the body as it moves relative to the medium is the reaction force from the body pushing the medium aside, and this force works against the direction of motion. I'm sure you've felt it, sticking your hand out of the window of a moving car, for example. It's not being pushed with equal force in both directions. And one thing more. When I'm moving, it also tells that third law of motion needs to be changed. I mean, third law of motion is there that every action has a reaction equal in magnitude and opposite direction. This is exactly fine, but just for the bodies that are at rest, like this body is at rest. So this is fine. This principle is working. This law is working. But when it comes to the objects that move or starts moving, there is modification needed for that those, uh, you know, uh, objects. I mean to say, every action has a reaction, equal, equal in magnitude, and same in that action. Again, you are simply wrong. An obvious counterexample to this is airplanes. As the wing moves, it strikes air, which, because of the angle of the wing, is pushed down. 
the reaction force acts in the opposite direction, pushing the plane up, even though the plane is moving relative to the air. If you were right, the plane would appear to get sucked down instead. I'm sure you agree that this is not what we observe. We also don't see cars that hit walls speed up. I don't think you understand Newton's third law. Uh, you may be able to recite it, but you don't understand it. Now what I do... Look at the object, right? Okay, an experiment. Great! Prediction. If the medium presses equally from all directions, even when the cylinder is in motion, that means the net force on it will be zero, so it will move at constant velocity. It will not slow down and stop. Now, I would borrow money from the Russian mob to bet that the cylinder is going to slow down. Well, what do you know? Your hypothesis has been falsified. And the sad thing is, you don't understand why. You seem to treat this as a successful experiment. What happens? The object moves because there are some sort of stuff liquid in it. It has to move the liquid out of its way, the same way as we have a space. When the one thing that would falsify your model is exactly what happened. That's how poorly you understand basic, and I mean high school basic, physics. You are not ready to do the thing you are trying to do. You need to go to school first and learn this stuff. Suppose this is planet Earth. Objects strike with a space when they move. I move it in the water. It will never fall down until my hand is moving. And if it's moving, it won't fall. This is what gravity is, by the way. Here, there is strike, gravity is felt, right? And at the same time, there, this comes here and pushes it in the same direction. So gravity is at the both places. So when it revolves and spins quite fast, it let the space strike on all of its part at the same time. If you were right, weight would be a function of velocity rather than mass. Looking at the behavior of celestial bodies, that is very obviously incorrect. For example, the Earth moves faster than or slower than the Sun, depending on the time of the year as it orbits the center of the galaxy. Yet the Sun's gravitational influence is always much stronger than the Earth's. The same problem applies to the Earth and the Moon. The Moon follows the Earth around the Sun at roughly 30 km per second relative to the Sun, a little faster or slower depending on the time of the month, but always has a surface gravity one-sixth of Earth's perfectly consistent with Newton's law. Finally, I'll play your experiment on a loop as I say this. Your explanation of gravity once again makes the prediction, since you evidently agree that gravity is equally strong in every direction, that the net force on a body moving through a medium is zero. You have empirically falsified this prediction yourself. You are completely wrong. You asked what to do next. Well, I'll tell you what to do first. Educate yourself. Again, don't even think about trying to add to a field before you qualify as an expert, or you are at least ready to begin that road from educated to expert, you know, professional to expert, you know, that step. And that means when you get your master's degree and you start doing original research, which will culminate in a PhD, that's when you start thinking about new stuff. You need to learn the old stuff first. Learn what is already known. That's where you need to begin. Look, it really sucks that you can't afford a formal education. It sucks that there are plenty of nations where you have to pay for this stuff yourself. I think that's counterproductive for the nation itself. A nation benefits from having a well-educated populace. So it should be in a nation's and a population's interest to collectively finance people's education. Um, but apparently that's not how it works. That's not how politicians in many other countries think about it. Unfortunately, there is really no substitute for a formal education when it comes to a field as advanced as physics. 
for 400 years, this field has been advanced by the most brilliant minds on the planet. And you need to learn all that stuff. You're not going to do that on your own. You can condense all those 400 years. It doesn't take 400 years to learn 400 years worth of discoveries. But someone has to guide you to make sure you hit everything important. And that means you have to be guided by someone who already knows the stuff. Learning it on your own is extremely difficult. Another problem if you're learning it on your own is that you won't have, especially if you have no money to spend, is that a lot of the experiments that you have to do to confirm the stuff, that's important. A science education includes experimental work so that you get to confirm the things you're learning. A lot of those experiments require equipment that costs money. Sometimes we're talking about, uh, you know, Archimedes principle, you can prove that with a spring and a weight and a glass of water. I mean, it's no problem. Uh, you can test that for less than 10 bucks, <laughs> five bucks maybe. Uh, but I have personally done experiments that cost more than 10 grand for the, the setup. And that's not much at all. I mean, when you consider what some, some of the things cost, I mean, some of the things you find in a, in a graduate level uh, physics lab, I mean, it's, it's insane money. And well, you'll, you're going to have to pay that money because you have to do experimental work. The best you can do for free is probably to watch lecture series on YouTube or something like that, or especially channels like Khan Academy that like really I mean, Khan Academy is really good if you want to look at a video about this specific concept. But someone has to set up a curriculum. Someone who actually knows the stuff. So it's still really difficult. Uh, and another thing you absolutely have to do is find exercises to do so that you actually try to use the stuff you're learning. And that leads me to a sponsor message, because if you want to do exercises, I can definitely recommend the sponsor of this video, Brilliant.org. At Brilliant, you can take interactive online courses in math, science, and computer-related topics made by experts at institutions like MIT or tech companies like Google and Microsoft. There are literally thousands of lessons available, and each lesson features interactive exercises, so you learn by doing, not just by memorizing. This really is the best way to learn, and it will help you acquire new skills for use in both your daily and professional life. As you do exercises, you get XP, and if you get enough XP in a week, you level up to a higher league. This, along with daily streak stats, not only makes you want to do the exercises correctly, it also helps you develop a daily learning habit, which is really important if you want to learn. You have to keep at it. Featured content right now includes courses in data analysis, programming, and large language models. But given the topic of this video, I really want to highlight a course called The Physics of the Everyday, which is a great introduction to basic physics that doesn't really require any fancy math, just multiplication, division, stuff like that, no calculus or anything. Although such courses are available for a more advanced audience. Click the link below, brilliant.org slash martimer81, and get started on your free 30-day trial period today. If you sign up for a premium subscription, you'll also get a 20% discount on your annual fee. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, thumb it up, subscribe with notifications on, and uh, if you really like what I do, please consider helping me out on Patreon. It's just a tip jar. You won't really get anything. It's fine. I don't do this for a living, but, you know, Every buck is appreciated. There's a link in the description. See ya.